Tommy G. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Hey, I'm back. Just here to bring some stuff, bro, concerning, you know, my life, the things I've went through, the lives of others, and went through similar situations. Bro, this is crazy, bro. This is absolutely crazy. What's going on? You hear me? And, um, what I stumbled across is crazy, man. What I come across might upset a, a few people. But I ran across an officer, bro, who described exactly what I went through when I was locked up. And people like these two individuals going through right now. Jeff Ford, Larry Hoover. You know, cut this down some. And introduce y'all to this uh, officer who's very brave, bro. We need to hear what he has to say. He is describing exactly what I went through in private prison and how they treat us. No, what he described is what they're doing in the county jail that he's working in. Bro, these are all the same tactics. Give me a second while I set this up. Man. This to this man's uh, experience with an inmate who was elderly, who was being mistreated by a group of officers, all the way on up to the warden. Listen to this, people. I witnessed an inmate by the name of James Malaric, who has been being mistreated ever since I started working on job training March 10th. The inmate was left to sleep on a metal frame with no mat, no blanket, not even a sheet, and it was 37 degrees outside. Oftentimes, I witnessed the inmate being forced to sleep naked. When it was 37 degrees outside, approximately, with cold air blowing into the cell through the vents. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm reading off of reports that I wrote during my time there that I submitted to human resources, Itself. that I submitted to my warden, my deputy Itself. warden, all my sergeants and lieutenants. Carrying on. Carrying on. This happened to Malaric again in May. So I started on job training in March. Right. Again in May, I witnessed this type of abuse be done to James Malaric. Uh, a pro 
approximately May 10th, I witnessed Sergeant Figarell enter the special needs unit. Sergeant Figarell took James Maleric's blanket, his mat, and his sheet for no reason at all. No reason. As the week would carry on, I was working in the hub. The inmate, James Maleric, would push my call button, literally crying. Brother Shields, James Maleric would call me Brother Shields. Brother Shields, will you please call your supervisor and ask if I may have my mat back? Why did my why did she take my mat? I'm not even on super I'm not even on suicide watch, excuse me. Now <clears throat> what do you mean by I'm not on suicide watch? Bro, there's certain reasons and certain security measures they got to take to protect the inmates. Well, they use these tactics, my my family, to um, you know, control the inmates, just tyrannical, bro, just be, just misuse and, and abuse this form of, of um, security and restraint. Yeah, when you're trying to kill yourself, they got to take away everything, you know, to make sure you don't die under their supervision. But now, you got officers in there, bro. Now I see it's across, this is across the country. I did my time in Wisconsin, Oklahoma, and Minnesota. This is, I believe, in either Carolina or Virginia. So there's a pattern, bro. It's like they got a, a pamphlet some type of memo to go out, treat all inmates in this manner and make sure all officers act in this manner towards inmates. It's finna, it's about to end, but at the same time, things about to get worse. They didn't took this man, he's well over his 50s and it's 37 degrees outside, bro. And I'm telling y'all, bro, this to cut the vents up. Remember I told you in one of my videos, I can't recall, but they would, Cut the heat up in the summer and cut the air conditioning on in the winter while wearing a hole. Oh, yeah, it gets crucial. Just continue listening right quick. The inmate went on to state while crying, it's very cold, Brother Shields. I can't sleep on this metal frame. I have serious metal conditions. I need Medical. my mat, please. May I at least have a sheet? I reached out to my sergeant, notifying my sergeant of the conditions that she created. My sergeant responded, he's not getting a thing. He'll be fine. This inmate was left without a sheet, without a mat, and without a blanket under the supervision of the warden, deputy warden, because he was simply being chastised and harassed and bullied. I'll tell you why in the... They use these tactics to bully these gentlemen. I'm gonna be honest, y'all. You rarely see them do white guys like that unless the white guys or whoever else aside from the dark races. If they not assisting us, they cool. But once they start around with us, bro, I'm like, hold on, y'all can't do them men like that. They still human beings like us. Woo -woo. They get to doing it to them too. But bro, this is cruel and unusual punishment and it goes on every day, bro. And this really needs to be looked into. They even doing women like this. Children in juvenile facilities get done like this, bro. My I told you, I was butt naked in the cell just like him. No blanket, no mattress. Mace all over my body, bro, all on the floor. It's terrible. We need people to step up. Let's continue. In the next video, I'm running out of time. At the Beaver Academy. Now, we, hold on, let me give, you, give me a second because he has the next video. 
concerning this? This particular inmate we're talking about, James Malaric. James Malaric has been housed in the hole longer than I had even been there. By the time I had got there, I was being told that he potentially has lawsuits pending against the jail. And what the jail likes to do is if you're an inmate who they've abused their power with and you're smart about how you go about your paperwork and stuff, the jail tries to silence you by placing you in the hole. This particular inmate, James Malaric, he wrote multiple letters to the White House, to news uh, companies, just trying to get the word out of what is happening to him and others in the jail. Pause again. Now, I told you that we did the same thing in our situation. And come to find out, bro, it's so much money invested into private prisons. And so many people. Y'all see what's going on with Kanye. We wrote Shaq. We wrote Kobe. We wrote NAACP. We wrote, I'm telling y'all, we wrote so many people once we found out that they had investments within the private prison structure or corporations. The black prestigious men with money and power who can make a difference, who are famous, they have stock in these places. Where their people are being tormented, bro. Sisters, kings, queens. This is an officer. He's not lying. I, I want to show his face, but I ain't got the rights to do that. But I can play the voice. And I hope that you would trust me. And know that this is actually happening. So if you got people in there, I know I ain't few, I got too many followers or anything like that. But if you have people in prison, bro, friends, family, I'll check up on them. See if they can see if they'll write you back. And if they don't, that means something is wrong. Because we love receiving letters and making phone calls in there. That's just that's just something to like really reflect on. Let's continue with this officer. And what I will witness is I will witness. So every inmate has to has to uh, send their mail through a sergeant. So a sergeant must approve your mail before it can be sent out to your family, to your lawyer, whoever. I would witness this sergeant in particular come into the hole. She would take all the inmates mail and if she wants your mail to get out she'd send it out i watched her destroy multiple inmates mail specifically this inmate james malaric and he, I, I i began talking with james malaric and what i found out about james malaric is he is not as crazy as they try to pass him off to be let's get back to the conditions this is an elderly man with multiple medical issues he has a, he had his back says it all so imagine somebody's grandfather in the worst of conditions being forced to sleep on a metal frame but ass naked after water has been thrown on him by a particular sergeant or co who does not like him i witnessed bro yes now did not tell y'all go watch my my earlier videos didn't I tell y'all this? It's still amazing to me. This man way across the country from, and 20 years later, bro, describing what's going on. Now, we've had complaints for over two decades, and this is still happening because of certain sergeants. I ain't gonna lie, skin color, not this, but at the same time, it do be asshole blacks. But it's mostly the white people against us doing us like this. Now, this is a brother who got in there who isn't afraid to speak. And I commend him. Now, when I say gangster, that's gangster, nigga. That right there, what he's doing, what I'm looking at right here on this computer. 
and sharing with you. So please take heed, people. Listen, I'm just trying to spread the word. Witness this happened to this man. And then the cold air is turned up on you. And you were forced to sleep like that. And then you write a grievance to inform the warden of the misconduct that's being done to you by the people wearing this badge. All f now listen, I got another video when I spoke while I was in the hole concerning writing grievances against the conditions and the officers who has you in these conditions. Why do I have a feeling that he's going to tell us that what I told you, it goes to the person you're writing against. And if they have an issue with it, they're going to toss it out. How the hell is that fair? They ain't going to never say, yeah, I wronged you. So why am I, why do my complaint got to go to the, per, the person I'm complaining about? This is what I went through. Let's see if this guy say the same thing. All for them to read your mail, throw it away, and then come fuck with you even more for even trying to put the word out to the warden of what's happening to you. Because mm -hmm. when when you don't agree with the way a CO treats you, you write a grievance, and then that grievance is sent directly back to the CO who you had a problem with. So there is no way to win. There is no voice for these people. And now your only way to connect with the outside world, well, that's being ripped up by the sergeant who's supposed to not do that shit. Come back for the next video. This particular you inmate- you hear me? I had to share that. I had to. He has more to say, but I don't want to too much time, man. It's a lot to speak on with this, and I'm kind of like really upset with this. You know, I got family that I, uh, that would hurt, man. They, they hurt. They know what I went through. You know? That gentleman he spoke on, Merrick, let's all pray for him. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It's your boy Tommy G. Y'all know what I say, love first, peace later. I got my nephew. This is what I do it for. And I hope y'all will do it for them also. This is our future we speaking on. Pray and give thanks to the Father for the entire nation of Israel, my people, the aboriginals. God bless. Good morning. Let's love each other, y'all. Period. Once again, your boy Tommy G. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. I'm feeling kind of upset about this. And I gotta do more videos concerning the situation. Took me back to what I went through, and it's real, y'all. This is really this is happening. So pray for me also, cause I'm fighting it, and also have a a young one going through it. So DJ, if you see this, I love you, son. I'ma always be there. Always be there. Love first. Peace later.
Shkila Pani, people. Let's get it right.